Urva para parigyanang achate paridipakam jayamana divai dharmat katang purvam nagriyate. The ignorance of the precedence and succession is a pointer to beginningless itself. For if it be a fact that a thing takes birth, why is not its cause apprehended? Alternate Translation The ignorance regarding the antecedents and the subsequence of the cause and the effect clearly proves the absence of evolution or creation. If the effect, dharma, that is, the jiva, has really been produced from a cause, then why can you not point out the antecedent cause? Commentary by Shankaracharya How do the wise assert the view of a jati, or absolute non-evolution? It is thus replied, The very fact that there is Purva para parijnanam, ignorance of the precedence and succession of the cause and the effect, is paridipakam, a pointer, ajate, to birthlessness. The fact of birth can be said to be established if the order of the succession of cause and effect be established. In the absence of such order, there cannot be any birth or evolution. If an entity takes birth, katam, why? It's purvam, antecedent cause. Nagrihyate is not grasped. The idea of cause cannot be thought of without the idea of effect, and vice versa. Therefore, we cannot say which one is antecedent. Hence, the idea of janma, birth or evolution, that is, an antecedent cause giving birth to a subsequent effect, is due to avidya, ignorance. One who perceives a thing undergoing birth must also, as a matter of necessity, perceive the origin of that thing, for the begetter and the begotten are inevitably interrelated. Therefore, that avidya is a pointer to birthlessness. Namaste. Wow. Bam. This is it. This is the core truth of the fourth chapter. That you cannot have an effect without simultaneously a cause. So if you can't point out the cause, that means the idea of cause and effect does not apply. See? Look, take a look at this pencil, right? You could say the point is the effect, but the point has a cause, my holding it and moving it. See? Every effect has a cause, just like every pencil has two ends. <laughs> you can't have one without the other. It's a pair. It's an item. Huh? What we say about people who are in love or going steady, they're an item. They always show up together. Well, it's the same thing with cause and effect, right? You can't have one without the other. So if the scientists, for example, cannot point out clearly the cause of the Big Bang, the whole thing is Maya, right? I mean, first of all, we can't even go back and verify empirically, uh, Mr. Scientist, the Big Bang itself. But what to speak of the Big Bang's cause? And guess what? Even if we could, there would still be an infinite regress because that cause would have to have a cause and that cause would have to have a cause and so on and so forth without any limit. So, you see, the whole idea is absurd. Actually, see, what people don't get is that this creation, this universe, is one thing. There appear to be all these separate parts rattling around, but 
that's just because we look for them. But why do we look for them? Words. And in science, math, right? The math says there should be a certain particle, right? So then they cook up an experiment and they, they tweak it until they find the damn thing. That's about how it works. What you see depends on how you look. So if you're looking for something, you know, just like they say, if you look for dirt, you'll find it. You know, if you look for the good in people, you'll find that. So it's up to you. It's up to your attitude. Hey, this is quantum mechanics. This is, you know, the Schrodinger's cat, right? If you look for it, you'll find it. You don't know whether it's going to be alive or dead, but you certainly will run into that cat. See how this works? This is <laughs> Brahman. Brahman looking at itself like in the mirror. But it's not an ordinary mirror. It's a funhouse mirror. And it's always changing and wiggling and twisting. And, you know, like just look at all the changes happening in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, it's amazing, right? And it's not going to let up. <laughs> We're on a new level now, at a new tempo now. A higher energy level now. We can't go back. It's just inconceivable. So don't cling to the way things were. Rather, try to roll with the way things are. See? And, and don't become a cause. Don't be an effect either. Stay neutral. Right? Because whatever is happening... This too shall pass. And something else will come along and take its place. I love this stuff, man, because it reveals, you know, this is the original chicken and egg problem. Isn't it? Which came first, the chicken or the egg? You can't answer it logically. It doesn't have a logical answer. And if you try to figure it out, you just go crazy. Infinite regress. See? So, of course, the same is true with the jivas, the living beings. Or any part of maya. Really, the truth is the same. For everything from the universe down to, I don't know, quarks and leptons or whatever. You cannot find the effect without a cause. If you go looking for the cause, you will surely find it. But see, Brahman <laughs> is neither a cause nor an effect. It's neither a subject nor a predicate. It's neither true nor false. It neither exists nor does not exist. And the same is true of Maya. Because Maya is nothing but Brahman. Oh, God. See, this is where words fail. That's why it says words fall back from Brahman, from the reality. And the mind, because the mind is based on words, name and form. But Brahman has no form, or you could say it has all forms has infinite form, which is the same as saying it has no form because it's constantly changing. Well, who could nail a name on you when you change with every new day? Huh? Still, I'm going to miss you because people like to hang on to things. They like to cling to things. And this is a major cause of suffering, because nothing stays the same, not for very long. And even if it does appear to stay the same, it's only because of the grossness and <laughs> the uh, inaccuracy of our perception. Because, of course, on the molecular level, everything is constantly you know, vibrating and moving around. So anyway... Cause and effect, right? 
What's the practice based on this? Well, a long time ago, we covered Buddha's conception of uh, Shankara. Shankara means like an intention, but it's a made-up intention. It's a fabrication. Uh, some people call it choices or intention or will. But it's basically how things start in this world. Some being concocts a cause or becomes a cause for something. Either way, when they become a cause, they do it with their body and mind. When they concoct a cause, they use their mind to tease one out of the phenomena around them. Even though this thing is actually just one big piece and there is no cause and effect, it all melds smoothly into one, see, at the root. <laughs> you look, you have to do the practice, right? What is the practice? You sit down and, and shut up and stop making causes. Now, yes, I know this is also a form of doing, right? It's a kind of a simulation. Just like in the case of samadhi, right? The effort to concentrate the mind over a long period of time becomes a habit. And so then even at times when you're not even thinking about samadhi, you go into a samadhi because of this habit. It's like a meditation Meditation teacher once told me, you go up through the seven jhanas, and when you reach the eighth, you just jump into nirvana, nibbana. Well, same thing is going on here. You analyze out all the causes having to do with the different bodies and koshas and whatever, neti neti, just clear it all out until there's nothing and then you have to jump into that nothing, dive into it freely, uh, not holding back anything. But, you know, turn off your mind, relax, and float downstream. It is not dying. It is not dying. Yeah? The Beatles had it. They got it a long time ago. Very smart guys. But anyway, if you can do this practice of stop making causes and let it become a habit, then one day your cause making and your fabrication and your, your will and your intention and your doing and all that stuff will simply stop effortlessly. That's what we want. That's what we're heading. But to get that, you have to do the work. Do the practice. Uh, sit down and shut up. <laughs> Stop the mind. Stop thinking. Now, eventually, you can maintain this state while you're doing your everyday chores, you know, the, the mechanical duties of the day that everybody does, wash, brush their teeth, wash their face, you know, whatever you do. So that also takes practice. But I think in the beginning, it's kind of easier to get into the flow that way. That's why a lot of people get into flow states through sports, extreme concentration on the body. And there are, you know, a Buddhist meditation lineages that do the same thing. But ultimately, you have to approach nothingness or emptiness because that is the causeless. And that is where you transcend cause and effect and you realize Brahman of causelessness, birthlessness, endlessness and beginninglessness. Om Tat Sat. Om Shakti Om. This is deep, huh? Om Namah Shivaya.